6000 STE, a special touring edition built to take on the world's best. Head of the Pontiac 6000 family of front-wheel drive coupes, sedans, and wagons, among 1984's best-selling mid-size cars. Pontiac Bill. By 1984, the U.S. auto industry was starting to emerge from the Malays era, and performance vehicles were again becoming in vogue compared to previous years where really not much was offered. Heck, in 1983, there wasn't even a Corvette offered for sale in that model year. In 1982, General Motors introduced its A-body lineup of cars, which included the Chevrolet Celebrity, the Pontiac 6000, the Olds Cutlass Sierra, and the Buick Century. But of these four vehicles, the Pontiac 6000 was definitely the one that had the most sporting character. And by 1984, it wasn't just the 6000 that had its sporty character. There was also a new model that was introduced in the previous year, the 6000 STE. The ST certainly helped lend credibility to Pontiac's marketing tagline at the time, We Build Excitement. Pontiac had always had a Firebird and the Trans Am as the top of the line Firebird. But by 1984, not only did they have the Fiero, which was a sporty commuter car, unfortunately, still with just the 2.5-liter four-cylinder for the 1984 model year, but Pontiac also had its second model year of the 6000 STE to provide the lineup with some additional flair. In 1984, the 6000 STE carried a base price of almost $8,000, making it a very expensive A-body. But for that price, the buyer got a lot of unique equipment, including a unique steering rack, suspension, some interior components, including a digital dash, and really cool driving lights at the front of the car to complement the halogen headlights. It also got an upgraded 2.8-liter pushrod V6 under hood, making 135 horsepower, which was about 20 more than the base 2.8-liter V6, and about 40 more than the 2.5-liter Iron Duke four-cylinder that came standard in the 6000. Well, 135 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot. You have to remember at the time that the BMW 528 and the Audi 5000 had engines that were making even less horsepower. So the 6000's 2.8 liter V6 really wasn't bad for the time. And the car was named to a number of magazines' favorites list, including Car and Driver's 10 Best for a number of years. Let's take a look at this dealership training video from 1984 that explains some of the features of the Pontiac 6000 as well as the 6000 STE and learn a little bit more about it. In today's world, change occurs at a rate sometimes too rapid to comprehend. And while not every attempt to do something new results in success, there are those special moments when with change comes something very exciting that exceeds expectation that brings about a high level of quality, total achievement, and true world-class distinction. In the world of automotive progress, such a breakthrough occurred when Pontiac introduced the 6000. Everything about Pontiac 6000 is functional as well as good-looking like the high quality fit and finish of the body panels engineered to precise standards for beauty styled with an eye toward distinctiveness Pontiac 6000 features the aerodynamic efficiency of an integral front air dam contoured side mirrors and minimum offset glass and moldings to help reduce drag and wind resistance For 1984, the 6000 offers some exciting new design touches, like a distinctively wider grille and new full-width tail lamps for a more exciting, bold appearance. All these Pontiacs are designed to stay looking good because every 6000 body is completely dipped and electronically bonded with corrosion-resistant primer before painting. Corrosion-resistant metals or plastics are used in high vulnerability areas of 6000's body. And after painting, the lower body panels are coated with anti-chip lower body plastic to help prevent chipping from road debris.
Inside, Pontiac 6000 offers generous interior appointments, like available bucket seats with adjustable headrests, upholstered in a number of attractive vinyl colors and cloth fabrics. The new four-spoke steering wheel provides a contemporary appearance, which complements Pontiac 6000's clean, functional instrument panel. There's highly effective sound-absorbing acoustical insulation and an extensive list of available stereo radios and tape decks for outstanding high-fidelity sound. The standard 2.5-liter engine and three-speed automatic feature electronic fuel injection for great efficiency and overall performance. And a 2.8-liter two-barrel V6 engine is available for added power with impressive fuel economy. Both engines feature computer command control, an onboard microprocessor which monitors engine performance to make fuel mixture and ignition timing adjustments as demands on the engine change. Pontiac 6000 also offers an available 4.3 liter V6 diesel package which features low maintenance, excellent economy and cruising range. I have to interrupt here to say that this 4.3 liter V6 diesel it's actually made by Oldsmobile Division. It was a V6 version of their 350 cubic inch gas diesel. And it only lasted until the 1985 model year. And I would not say that it was necessarily low maintenance. It was a much better diesel than the Olds 5.7 liter 350 cubic inch diesel. But it still had its shortcomings. The package includes 14 inch steel belted radial tires and heavy suspension that gives drivers a special feel of the road. And its new larger 16.6 gallon fuel tank keeps that special feeling going longer between fill-ups. 6000 features a standard three-speed automatic transmission that uses a torque converter clutch to eliminate unnecessary slippage and deliver engine power more efficiently during cruising speeds. Pontiac 6000 tracks the road with surprising agility, offering the kind of handling and performance you'd expect from Pontiac's premium driving machine. Front wheel drive puts the powertrain over the drive wheels for good traction. And power assisted rack and pinion steering helps provide a responsive, positive feel of the road. A front stabilizer bar helps control body lean during cornering. An independent front suspension with coil springs and McPherson struts absorb the bumps to provide excellent overall ride. Pontiac 6000's rear suspension plays a big part in the ride too with full coil springs, a torsion action rear trailing arm, rear track and stabilizer bars, and shear mounted shocks, isolated in rubber mounts for comfortable riding and impressive handling. High pressure steel belted radial tires and self-adjusting power front disc and rear drum brakes are standard. The brakes feature low drag semi-metallic calipers to reduce friction for added fuel efficiency. And audible disc brake wear sensors signal if the disc pads need servicing. Now, unfortunately, the music used in the background of this section of the video actually had a copyright claim from YouTube, so I had to mute it out. But this effectively just talks about the 6000 STE in particular and some of the unique features that it has and that it was introduced for the 1983 model year and it's continuing for the 1984 model year. Inside the 6000 STE, power windows came standard, as did power mirrors. You can see it had this joystick mirror control. Got a tilt leather wrapped steering wheel, four spoke wheel. They also had this function monitor system that allowed you to see if all your lights were working, doors were open, a number of other interesting features too. One of those was this electronic dashboard with this horizontal tachometer and digital speedometer as well as gauge readout that became standard along with that information display for the 1984 model year. At least gave the driver a sense of what was going on compared to other American vehicles at the time and you even got the infamous GM multifunction control stock as part of this vehicle, something that was nearly ubiquitous across all GM vehicles during the time. And here's the typical Delco ETR radio with the graphic equalizer function. Overall, the 6000 STE was a great sporty handling car, and as I mentioned previously, won numerous accolades from the magazines. Having driven a number of these, I can say that they really do drive extremely sporty for the time period. 
don't have a lot of power by modern standards, but certainly for the time, they were quite comfortable as well as peppy, shall we say. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Pontiac 6000 and Pontiac 6000 STE. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed that brief overview of the 1984 Pontiac 6000 and 6000 STE. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.